हेलो एवरी वन एंड वेलकम बैक टू जैकलेट एजुकेशनल चैनल सो दिस इज द पार्ट फोर्टीन फॉर द कम्प्लीट यूनिट वाइज सिलेबस ऑफ यू जी सी नेट एनवायरमेंटल साइंस एग्जाम एंड टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू कंटिन्यू दिस सीरीज इफ यू हैवन चेक द प्रीवियस लेसन देन चेक द लिंक गिवन इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन एंड देन कम बैक टू दिस वीडियो सो द फर्स्ट वी स्टार्ट विद द इंट्रोडक्शन पार्ट सो द एटमोसफियर इज द पार्ट ऑफ द अर्थ विच इज डिवाइड इन टू स्पीयर्स विच वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस इन द प्रीवियस वीडियोज इन दिस सीरीज ऑल्सो वी हैव डिस्कस अबाउट द हाइड्रोस्फियर and now we will discuss about the lithosphere yes there is the important part so all this sphere along with the biosphere they are interdependent on each other to function as a whole so you can see the sun is the source of energy and because of the sun all these four sphere are interdependent and as a result all this system on earth is working so today we are going to know about the lithosphere as we have known now so first thing is what is the meaning of this word so this word is derived from the greek word lithos so lithos ka meaning hai rocky or stone and it is the primary the rocky and stony part covering the whole earth surface so rocky and stony part is composed of this part that is lithosphere on which the interaction of the other geosphere happen that means the hydrosphere the biosphere the everything atmosphere all this interaction happening on this rocky substance or rocky part that is called as lithosphere next is who coined this term this term was coined by joseph barrel in 1914 who was the first to study the motion of the lithosphere over a molten layer which is called as asthenosphere so we'll know about this sphere in the next slides so as you can see this is the cross section of the earth and you can see the crust is divided into two type of crust one is continental crust one is oceanic crust so what is this continental crust the crust which is on the continents is known as continental crust and the crust part which is present on the ocean that is called as the oceanic crust so that thing is important it is divided into two parts and this lithosphere is actually consisting of crust that is oceanic and the continental crust and the upper most solid part of the mantle so not the complete mantle so we will only study about this part that is the crust part and the upper mantle part that is the solid part so for your knowledge you should also know that core is having two parts outer core and inner core outer core is liquid in nature and the inner core is solid in nature so all these things about mantle and core we will discussing in the coming videos but today only we are discussing about the lithosphere so in this picture it will be more clear that continental crust is the crust which is present on the continents as you can see you can say that on land oceanic crust is the crust which is present below the oceans and the upper mantle parts that part is asthenosphere which we have discussed in the last slide that this was coined by that person who had denoted the term that is lithosphere so he found this asthenosphere so greek word asthenosphere means without strength that means that astheno means without strength or that is weak sphere so that is called as asthenosphere it is highly viscous in nature mechanical it is weak and ductile is the property and it is the upper part of the mantle region so you should note down this asthenosphere is the upper part of the mantle which is included in the lithosphere region now let's move to this table and this table will be differentiating between continental crust and oceanic crust which we will be studying today the most important things i have noted down here so you should also make this table in your notes it will be very important and helpful in the examination first talking about the thickness so continental crust the thickness is 35 to 70 km whereas the oceanic crust the thickness is thinner than the continental crust that is 6 to 10 km approximately so in this part the lithosphere is called as the young part that is 40 km is young after that 400 km is craton so all these definitions we will know in the next slide what is craton and all just you have to note down here next thing is the subduction zones are found in the oceanic crust so this also we will know this thing and we will know that here the composition of continental crust is mostly granitic that is made up of granite or andesitic that is andesite type of rocks whereas the oceanic crust are made up of the basaltic or the basalt type of rocks so this is also important note down this now coming to the density so density is lesser in case of the continental crust which is approximately 2.7 g per cm cube and it is more dense in the oceanic crust that is 3 g per cm cube and here you should know that density that is in continental crust it is less because of which there is no subduction seen in the continental crust but here in oceanic crust subduction is seen 
Next is rock types. Rock types are sedimentary, igneous and metamorphic rocks present in the continental crust. But here in oceanic crust, the rocks are in the layer types. And they are the 1, 2 and 3 types that is sediments, pillow types, dikes and gabbros. Only you should know these terms. Don't go much deep about these things. Just you should know they are layered form and they are in sedimental form, pillows, dikes and gabbros. Coming to the age, so age means continental crust is older, that means it is more than 4.2 giga annum, yes, giga annum is actually the billion years, you can say 4.2 billion years old, that is continental crust and here average age of the continental crust over the world is 1.8 billion years, that is we can say 1.8 giga annum, new term for the people which you have not known, giga annum means billion years. Similarly, here the oceanic crust, the age if you can say, it is younger. That means its age is greater than 200 mega annum. Mega annum means million years. So here you can see ridges, abyssal plains and trenches in case of oceanic crust which we have learned in the last video. Next thing is average age of the oceanic crust is 65 mega annum that is million years but here average age is 1.8 billion years so as you can see it is older than the oceanic crust next feature you should know that the other features continental crust may be folded and faulted types so it is all coming under the geography which will be studying in the next units so you should know it is the type of folded and fault kind of thing is found that's for the rocks and transforming faulting is common this type of fault which is seen in case of the plates in the oceanic crust transform type is common and here we can see it is spreading the oceanic crust is in the spreading form it has magnetic stripping and island arc so no need to worry about this new terminology we will be explaining in the next slide and here one more interesting thing you should note down that in continental crust one more important term you should know it is having orogenic belt so everything we will be knowing in the next slide let's move so here let's start with the craton so craton it was there that in the case of continental crust cratons are present so what are these cratons cratons similarly the greek word kratos it has been coming from that that means it is strength so it is an old and stable part of the continental lithosphere so old people are having the experience so as you can see so from there you can relate they are having the strength of experience and it is very stable because old people are mature and they are stable so you can remember like that craton are stable part of the continental lithosphere now coming to the subduction so here you have seen that subduction is seen in case of oceanic crust as we have seen here it is marked so we will know what is this subduction so subduction is actually a geological process that may takes the place at the convergent boundaries so there are two kinds of boundaries convergent boundaries and divergent boundaries if you don't know we'll be discussing in the next videos so here the tectonic plates that made of the tectonic plates because of their movement only we face the earthquakes so where one plate moves under the another plate which plate the tectonic plates and it is forced to sink due to the high gravitational potential energy into the mantle region so you should mark here it is forced to sink inside the mantle region and the subduction zones are the sites that usually have a high rate of volcanism and earthquake so because of these things that thing the subduction takes place one plate moves under the another plate this causes the volcanic eruption and earthquake so you can see in this picture so here on the oceanic part you can see the lithosphere is moving down because of subduction one plate is moving under the other and here it is going into the mantle region so i hope you have been able to know these two terms let's move to the next slide to know two more important terms so here we have discussed that orogenic so what is this orogen so an orogen or orogenic belt is actually developing when a continental plate crumples and is uplifted so when a continental plate is uplifted it to form one or more mountain ranges so as a result when the mountain ranges are formed because of the crumpling of the continental plates or you can say because of the uplifting of the continental plates then one or more mountain ranges are formed and this involves a series of geological processes collectively called as orogenesis so because of this orogenesis process orogenic belts that is the mountain ranges are formed when the upliftment of the continental plates are seen
I hope you are clear now. Let's move to the next topic. That is the next term, magnetic stripping. So, what is this magnetic stripping? It is seen when the sea floor is spreading. Yes, sea floor when it spreads, it is seen that magnetic stripping and magma from the mantle is rising through the earth's crust. So, when from the earth crust the magma rises up, this magnetic stripping is seen, and that magma then turns into the new crust. Thus forming the oceanic crust. So mantle from the mantle, magma will erupt out, and because of which, when it will be solidified, then it will form the oceanic crust. So this is the magnetic stripping, the sea floor when it spreads. Now let's move to the next slide. So here we will know about the last terminology that is also very important. If you are knowing here in the environmental geology portion, it will be helpful. What are island arcs? So island arcs are long chains of the active volcanoes with intense seismic activity. That means seismic activity means which are having the potential for the earthquakes. So because of this active volcanoes of long chains and they are found along the convergent tectonic plate boundaries. So when the plate boundaries in the convergent zones these boundaries are found these arcs of island these are actually active volcanoes of long chains and the example is the ring of fire as you can see here one volcano two volcano three volcanoes are there so this is on the boundaries of convergent tectonic plates when the long chains of volcanoes are present so i will ask you one question you have to comment in the comment section that where this ring of fire is present we have to name the ocean which ocean ring of fire is situated so that's all in this part of the video i hope you have enjoyed this make sure you have subscribed to the channel and hit the notification icon to get all the updates related to environmental science exam and now we will continue this series for the help for the ugc net environmental science examination so see you guys in our next video. Take care, keep smiling and believe in yourself.